Welcome back for another episode. Today we're going to be working on the Red Ram Roadster. Uh, my 24 Dodge Brothers. It's got the 241 Hemi in it. 37 Cadillac LaSalle transmission. But today we're going to be trying to fit this seat from a 31 Plymouth into the car and also start the fabrication of some floor pans. So let's get right to it. So we're going to cut out this X bracing that I have in the doors. No longer need it. I got the structure of the car rigid and secured. I did start framing out the floor pan substructure. We're going to try and get that seat fitted in there and then start making the floors. Also, I want to make a removable transmission tunnel for the center. So I'll get the grinder out, get these X braces cut out, see if we can get that seat fitted in there. So we got the seat fitting, just took some trimming and a little engineering, but I think it looks real good. I'll make a little filler piece for here to fill that void. So next we'll work on the floors. Yeah, fits perfect now. We're gonna go with it. So I started making a paper template for this floor pan. I got it roughed out, but I gotta fine tune it a little bit. And then we'll transfer it to some metal. <laughs>
metal out of my friend's scrap pile. It's some kind of a cover or plate of some sort. But it's a nice heavy gauge thickness. Being I'm gonna just put a flat floor in this because it's such a small area. So it should work just fine. I'll transfer my pattern onto the metal and cut it out. the floor cut the shape fit it in I'm not gonna go ahead and weld this just yet I have some other stuff I want to do prior to that but we'll make a template for the other side flip this over do the same thing cut a piece out for there and then the tow board area I'm gonna put back like how Dodge had it uh, the, with the floor uh, being wood they had basically wood planks going across. Uh, that's how the Dodge Brothers did it. So that's how I'm gonna do it. So we'll measure that up later, get some uh, lumber for that, and then build the transmission tunnel. So let's keep it going. Well, it's a new day, new haircut. And we're back on the Red Ram Roadster. Uh, we last left off with me fitting the seat which I accomplished we just have to now get it bolted to the framework so I went ahead and marked out four mounting positions and I'm gonna weld in these threaded inserts into the framework that I can bolt the seat into So here we have the threaded insert for the front and rear seat bracket bolts. Next, we'll get the seat fitted one more time and that should wrap up that part of it. frame is now securely bolted into the inner framework of the body. Next we'll continue on with the floor structure. I'll start on the passenger side framing out for the floor like the driver's side has been done and then we'll move on to the tow board area.
Okay, so we got that first piece in there. Kept on trimming, but we got it. Better to cut a little bit at a time than too much. Uh, the next piece, I'm gonna take the steering column out to put in because I'm not sure of the exact location yet for the wheel. I'm gonna have to, um, well, I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So as I was saying, about the steering column um, I want to fit it exactly with the wheel I want to use with the seat fully in and me sitting in it to get a reach for the wheel and positioning so I came across this wheel that I like it's actually uh, for a boat uh, the company I saw on the back of it said Allen Marine I did some research. It's a vintage era boat wheel from the 60s, from what I saw, possibly a little earlier, but it won't fit right now. The shaft of the column, of the, of the original steering wheel, is larger. So I need to have this part turn down on the lathe and then I also need you can see where the Woodruff key went I need to have this one enlarged right now it's too small right there so I'm gonna have that done so I can get this wheel properly mounted on there and then go ahead and locate the steering column in relation to the dash originally it was here probably going to go there again i just don't know about the up and down adjustment yet so i'm going to take that shaft out for now so i can continue with the tow board and get that fitted All right, starting to shape up. I got the other driver's floor just setting in there for now. Next, I'll make one for the passenger side down here. And then I'll make a, a shallow transmission tunnel. All right, so I made the passenger side floor pan just using the driver's side template flipped over. Got that cut out. That fits in there real nice. So what we're going to work on next is the transmission tunnel cover. Uh, you may notice this shifter is offset from the center. It's one of the few transmissions made that has an offset shifter coming out of the top. Another unique feature to the 37 LaSalle transmission. All right, so I started making a template with a piece of poster board. So we got a template made for the transmission tunnel. I'll take this now and transfer it to some metal, get that cut out, shape it, fit it, and get it final located in position. We'll take some quarter inch screws and nuts, get them situated and positioned around to secure it. And we'll keep going from there. So I got our cardboard template transferred to some sheet metal. 
which in this case turned out to be a door that I found in my friend's scrap pile. Nothing like repurposing. Uh, so I got that transferred, cut out. I got a, the flanges and a general shape to it for now. Got the shifter located. I'm going to drill that out with the hole saw now. We'll take it back into the car, do some final shaping, and then drill our holes to secure it onto the floorboard. I better hurry up. It's starting to rain out here. All right, we beat the rain for now, but uh, we might have a rain delay. So we'll take a quick brief break. So let's fit this into the car and give it a little final shaping and continue on with the process. A little bit more curvature. Well, that's looking real nice. I think we're going to go with that. Uh, what I'll do next clamp this to the uh, inner floor structure and then I want to make a piece for the back of the tunnel a vertical piece with a flange for mounting it and it'll also stiffen this shape up so let's go ahead and get that clamp A little windy today. All right, so I'm going to take this piece of metal here and scribe this shape. Actually, what I want to do first is put a bend on here. Right about there. And then we'll go ahead and get that shape traced. Okay, so I got a bend on there. That will be the mounting flange to the inner floor structure. Now I can transfer this radius accurately onto this piece. So that's what I need to cut out and weld onto here. So that's what I'm going to do. Cut this out with the tin snips. Makes quick work of it. All right, I'll get the welder in here, put a couple tacks on it, remove this, and weld it from the back side. Before I take this off to weld that fully, I'm going to go ahead and drill out screw holes for where I mount it onto the subframe. This way I put this back in the same position 
every time. Takes any of the guesswork out of the game, you know? I'll go ahead and weld that solid. Already you can see it's not going to move on us. It retains the shape of the radius that we need. So we're doing good. So I got the transmission tunnel, the rear part welded in. You can see it gives it some nice structure, and keeps its form and shape. What I'm going to do next is weld in inserts for quarter inch screws that will hold this tunnel down in place. I like using these instead of just a sheet metal screw. Over time, you take them in and out, the sheet metal screw enlarges the hole and it doesn't hold tight. With the threaded uh, machine thread, quarter inch, that's not going to happen so you're always going to have a good tight fit every time you take it on and off so i'll go ahead and get that welded in and then i got some cross bars here to put in here and here to give it more of a frame structure for the floor and to also seal this area off and then we can lay the floor paint on top spot weld onto these cross members and then I'll weld along the edge. So we'll get this in position, welded, and do the same for the other side. So we got the floors in, 
Uh, we got them fully welded around the edges and spot welded onto those cross braces I showed you earlier. Uh, we're going to now fit the transmission tunnel and the wooden floorboards that I have cut out for the car and kind of give this a final initial um, completion. Still be some more fine tuning and grinding and stuff like that to do, but we're moving, moving forward. All right, so get this nicely aged plank of wood I have fitted. I don't really want to use anything brand new on this car. I want to keep it very nostalgic looking as though it was pulled out of a barn in the, you know, from an old 50s hot rod build that was just sitting for years, which. All right, so we got the next upper toe board. It's a tight fit there. I have to trim that a little bit. Maybe. Okay. Okay. That's nice. We're going to, I'll paint that black, probably cut out just like a heavy rubber mat to put in here. Um, I'll get a shifter boot to put over here. And then we still have to locate and cut out for the steering wheel and the pedals, which will probably be the next video I do on this car. But let's get the seat fitted in. Well, I'm actually sitting in the car for the first time since I've owned it. Now that we got the seat in here and the floor pans and tow board, and they're making great progress to where I can take it to the next level of locating the steering wheel, the column, all the pedals. And then at that point, we can start hooking up all the mechanicals of those and get some gauges in here. And we're getting close. I've never been closer, that's for sure. So check back in for the next video. I'll probably be working on the pedals and the steering column. 
and we'll see where that leads us. So again, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.